Have you ever planted a garden for your chickens? And what about growing food in mineral tubs? Today, we're gonna learn how to do both of those on the homestead, so stick around. Good morning, this is Deb from Just Do Something Homestead, and today we are planting crops for our chickens food. We raise all sorts of food for our chickens from sunflowers to millet. But this is a little different. This is replanting the food plot in their run. is a little bit different than most. We bought this house a year and a half ago and they already had an in-ground swimming pool. But don't worry, we didn't fill it in. When we bought this house, it was already filled in. Since it had the fencing, the pool house, electric, and everything else, we decided to make this an amazing deluxe chicken run. may look like some fertile soil now, but let me tell you, this was full of poison ivy, sumac, uh, Virginia creeper, and a whole lot of other things you couldn't even walk through. But before you say, wow, that is such an awesome space for your chickens, let me show you where it started. Originally, we were going to adapt this pool house into a chicken coop itself, but honestly, it was just in too bad a shape. So what we ended up doing was moving a shed over into the far corner. Last year at this point, we were still trying to remove the trees that were growing in here, as well as all those weeds. The chickens dug out the rest of the roots and the weeds, and now we can finally get to planting it. We're gonna plant a pound of wingmaster and a pound of red clover. Wingmaster is a variety of millets and they've added just a small portion of sunflower seeds. We are going to put up a solar electric fence to keep them out of this area until it's up. And even then, they're only gonna have access to half of the pool area at a time. That way, what they eat on will have time to recoup and not be killed down to the root system. But first, they are really enjoying digging in this soil. So we're gonna go get the fence, put it up, and then we will start planting seeds. If we tried to plant the seeds while the chickens were still able to get on here, they would simply follow us and eat all the seeds. Chickens absolutely love to dust bath in fresh soil. We got a pile of chickens. Wow, first try, we got the mesh up. And this is Premier One um, chicken fencing. And already the chickens are crashing into it, so we gotta get it juiced. When we put up this netting, we decided to leave about four feet along the long side so that the chickens can still dig to their heart's content. This is our first time using this netting, so <laughs> wish us luck. <laughs> We're learning as you learn. scattered the seed all over our little food plot and now Jim is spreading some well compost straw on top. Straw is spread. You don't want it too thick because then your grass and your seeds won't be able to come up through it. So next thing we're going to do is water it well. All right, the chicken food plot is planted. Not only that, it's covered in straw and it is watered. So now all it has to do is grow. Now, as you can see, only one chicken is still brave enough. <laughs> the others have been zapped. <laughs> um, they would just squawk and then run for the coop. So right now they're, they're on a learning curve. <laughs> we also added a small coop inside our run for our chicks. Also on my list today, I am going to fill up some more mineral tubs and bring them out to the garden. 
purchased 50 more of these tubs, found them on Marketplace, and today we're going to start using them. It has been crazy busy this weekend trying to get stuff done in our garden. And whew, these are mineral tubs. <laughs> They're heavy. But I'm filling them with about six inches of stone on the bottom. And then I need to take them over to the garden and set them up. But wow, it's hot. It's already dry. So I've got to do some watering. Whew, on the roll again. I have, I think, 18 mineral tubs set up along the edge of my garden. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to plant my herbs in them. I have a lot of herbs in there already, but we are going to be adding a whole lot more. I don't carry a tape measure with me. I know Jim often has his in his overall pocket, but it's just one more thing that's in the way for me. So these mineral tubs are one short shovel apart. <laughs> For the past two days, as I've been working on these mineral tubs, Jim has been out mowing the fields. Now we have three very nice hay fields. That's what you're seeing right here. There's our barn. But we also have two or three hay fields that have been neglected for well over a decade. And what we found, not only are they full of cactus, yes, I did not know that cactus grew in West Virginia. Apparently it does when you need lime, so he is so busy, um, he's actually over on that hill, I can see him now, um, trying to mow these fields because they are full of small trees. And if we are going to save these fields and make them into some more hay fields, we're gonna have to get those trees out. So it's a difficult task and he's whooped, I'm whooped, but I'm almost done with this row of mineral tubs. I'm gonna get it done right now. <laughs> If there's anything difficult about using mineral tubs, it is that before those seeds have germinated and come up, you need to water them a lot. They dry out quickly, and I've had more than my share of seeds that simply did not germinate because they dried out. So if you're using mineral tubs, it's just like uh, growing bags. You're going to have to water them more. I fill my mineral tubs with a combination of several different types of soils and compost, but most of it is ProMix. I've tried other brands. Mm, nope, I'm going to stick with organic ProMix. Although I do plant a lot of herbs in these tubs, I also plant a few things like radishes, and this one is carrots. We have at least two feet of dirt that those carrots can grow in. And so it is a wonderful way to grow your carrots. Only problem is they need lots of water. And although I absolutely love this garden by our house, the soil itself is heavy clay. So I am not able to grow anything underground by the house. Now the soil over at our potato patch is completely different. It's light and fluffy, but here I simply cannot grow carrots. Mineral tubs has enabled me to grow root plants that I simply could not grow in this heavy clay. As I've shown many times, my peppermint is doing sensational. And I've been able to take cuttings and start a lot more and sell them at the farmer's market. The next layer after my stone, I start with some sticks. Most of these are maple that I found in the yard. This is just filler. Then I add one big one this will eventually break down. Now I'm not gonna grow my carrots in this one because carrots need a big, deep space for them to develop. But I can plant my herbs that don't have deep roots into this one. Next, I'm just adding filler. Whatever I have for potting soil, not my best soil. This one, I got at Dollar General. It was a school project for my students to plant bean seeds. But since I paid for it, I brought the extra back home and I'm gonna put it into this bin. Now I'm gonna place it in my garden before it's too heavy for me to handle, which <laughs> isn't very heavy. On my way to the garden, I stop by the rabbit barn and get some well decomposed rabbit poop. That is the best fertilizer around. And the last step, I fill it with my good soil. 
All right, I topped off that last mineral tub with some Coast of Maine organic raised bed mix. I love this soil because it is so rich. It's broken down, it's not full of mulch. I like to plant my herbs in the evening when we're expecting some rain. And tomorrow morning, that's in fact what's gonna happen. We're gonna get some rain. So I'm gonna plant this thyme in this very first mineral tub. I started most of my herbs in January. Some of them thrived. Many of them never even got started. One of them was thyme. You wanna raise some organic thyme or any other herbs for that matter. You can buy these in your grocery store. Just make sure they're organic and make sure you get them outside so they harden off first. Now this poor thyme was all on a big tight ball. So the first thing I did after I planted it was spread it out, water it, and this thing is gonna take off. And there you have it, 22 mineral tubs for me to plant my herbs, carrots, and radishes in. Another project that I started this weekend is training my squash to grow onto a trellis. And a lot of my uh, subscribers have asked how to do this. What you do is you cut off all the lower leaves and then you start attaching it to the trellis. That's gonna train it to grow up and not all over the ground because that just invites disease and lots and lots of bugs. Unfortunately, my cucumbers are doing awful. I don't know what's going on with them. Not everything is perfect. Each year something will grow super and something else is gonna struggle. This year the cucumbers are struggling. Another one of my projects this weekend was to trim all of my tomatoes. I have 11 cattle panels of tomatoes. That's roughly 100 plants. In fact, I just ordered eight more cattle panels that will come next week. To trim my tomatoes, I remove all the leaves from the stem for about six inches from the surface of the ground. That again is gonna keep disease and insects at bay. You don't trim and trellis your tomatoes, especially indeterminate ones. This is what happens. You end up with a jungle. Ooh, gardening in June is such an incredibly busy time on the homestead. If you enjoyed this video on how to start a food plot for your chickens and mineral tubs for your herbs, then please like, subscribe, and share. Have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye.